Death Valley. The ominous name alone evokes fear. California's largest national park is a harsh, rugged, dangerous place. It is home to contrasts. Badwater Basin is the lowest point in the United States, nearly 300 feet beneath sea level. But within the park are mountains that push more than 10,000 feet above sea level. Likewise, the valley temperatures can exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit, while the mountains are often below freezing, especially at night. It's a desert region, but a waterfall flows within the park. Such is the nature of this natural wonder, it feels so otherworldly that George Lucas selected several locations in Death Valley in the initial 1977 Star Wars film. But it's also home to a modern mystery, one that feels utterly unnatural. We're setting our destination for Racetrack Playa to talk about the Sailing Stones phenomena and whether the recent explanation shared by several scientists and affirmed by NASA makes sense. So let's get into it. Racetrack Playa is a dry lake bed located near Saline Valley in the northwest part of the park. To get to Racetrack, you need to follow a long, bumpy road that can rattle your gears and wreck your suspension. You set out from the grandstand parking area and drive two miles south, but when you arrive, you're treated to a stark desert landscape complete with cracked ground. And then you set out on foot towards the southeast end of the playa. Within a few minutes, you should be able to see the sailing stones. These rocks are large and come crashing down to the playa due to erosion from wind and moisture in the surrounding mountains. They reach the arid surface and sit there undisturbed. But then, without anyone touching them, they begin their horizontal trek across the sizzling earth. Amazingly, some of these rocks have traveled more than a quarter of a mile, their trails stretching behind them. And when scientists first began to study the sailing stones in the early part of the 20th century, they were stumped. In fact, prior to time-lapse photography, with a subsequent study, there was never any visual evidence of the stones moving. But the paths they carved in the surface of the playa show that they did move. And given their mass and the lack of any other tracks, it seemed the only explanation was that they moved on their own. Which seems impossible, just like every other explanation for the sailing stones. Thankfully, those earlier investigations were picked up by other scientists who were as curious about the sailing stones as we are. In 2014, the National Park Service published an article that seemed to settle the science once and for all. And quoting now, in a new paper published in the August 27th PLOS-1, a team led by Scripps Institution of Oceanography, UC San Diego paleobiologist Richard Norris, report on first-hand observations of the phenomena. Because the stones can sit for a decade or more without moving, the researchers did not originally expect to see motion in person. Instead, they decided to monitor the rocks remotely by installing a high-resolution weather station capable of measuring gusts to one-second intervals and fitting 15 rocks with custom-built motion-activated GPS units. The Park Service could not let them use native rocks, so they brought in similar rocks from an outside source. The experiment was set up in winter of 2011 with permission of the National Park Service. Then, in what Ralph Lorenz of the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University, one of the paper's authors, suspected would be the most boring experiment ever, they waited for something to happen. But in December 2013, Norris and co-author James Norris of Interwoof and Richard's Cousin arrived in Death Valley to discover that the playa was covered with a shallow pond no more than seven centimeters or three inches about deep. Shortly after, the rocks began moving. Quote, Science sometimes has an element of luck, Richard Norris said. We expected to wait five or ten years without anything moving, but only two years into the project, we just happened to be there at the right time to see it happen in person. Close quote. Their observations show that moving the rocks requires a rare combination of events. First, the playa fills with water, which must be deep enough to allow formation of floating ice during cold winter nights, but shallow enough to expose the rocks. As nighttime temperatures plummet, the pond freezes to form sheets of windowpane ice, 
which must be thin enough to move freely but thick enough to maintain strength. On sunny days, the ice begins to melt and break up into large floating panels, which light winds drive across the playa pool. The ice sheets shove rocks in front of them, and the moving stones leave trails in the soft mud bed below the pool's surface. Quoting again, on December 21st, 2013, ice breakup happened just before noon, with popping and cracking sounds coming from all over the frozen pond surface, said Richard Norris. I said to Jim, this is it, close quote. These observations were surprising in light of previous models which had proposed hurricane force winds, dust devils, slick algal films, or thick sheets of ice as likely contributors to rock motion. Instead, the rocks moved under light winds of about three to five meters per second, 10 miles an hour, and were driven by ice less than five millimeters or a quarter of an inch. It's too thin to grip large rocks and lift them off the playa, which several papers had proposed as a mechanism to reduce friction. Further, the rocks moved only a few inches per second, roughly two to six meters per minute, a speed that is almost imperceptible at distance and without stationary reference points. It's possible that tourists have actually seen this happening without realizing it, said Jim Norris. And quoting again, it is really tough to gauge that a rock is in motion if all the rocks around it are also moving. Close quote. Individual rocks remained in motion for anywhere from a few seconds to 16 minutes. In one event, the researchers observed that rocks three football fields apart began moving simultaneously and traveled over 60 meters, 200 feet, before stopping. Rocks often moved multiple times before reaching their final resting place. The researchers also observed rockless trails formed by grounding ice panels, features that the Park Service had previously suspected were the result of tourists stealing rocks. The presence of water in the playa seems to be the key to this mystery, which was confirmed in 2020 when NASA published an astronomy photo of the day from Keith Burke, showing the Milky Way above Racetrack Playa with one of the sailing stones in the foreground. The astronomy picture of the day from April 13th, 2020 has been preserved in a few locations, but the UK paper The Sun covered the story with some depth. In quoting now from The Sun, NASA explained alongside its chosen image, quote, how did this big rock end up on this strange terrain? One of the more unusual places here on Earth occurs inside Death Valley, California, USA. There, a dry lake bed named Racetrack Playa exists that is almost perfectly flat with the odd exception of some very large stones, one of which is pictured here in April of 2019 beneath a dark, Milky Way-filled sky. Now the flatness and texture of the large playa like racetrack are fascinating, but not scientifically puzzling. They are caused by mud flowing, drying, and cracking after heavy rain. Only recently, however, has a viable scientific hypothesis been given to explain how heavy sailing stones end up near the middle of such a large flat surface. Unfortunately, as frequently happens in science, the seemingly surreal problem ends up having a relatively mundane solution. It turns out that in winter, thin ice sheets form and winds push ice sections laden with even heavy rocks across the temporarily slick playa when sunlight melts the ice." Close quote. The team at NASA even know how much of a letdown this explanation is. Maybe it is as simple as the ice sheets and wind causing the stones to move forward and leave a trail documenting their journey. Or maybe there is some other more interesting explanation to this modern mystery. I hold out hope that there is something more. But what do you think? Make sure you leave us a comment with your thoughts about this phenomenon below. And if you like this video, please share it with someone who finds these kinds of mysterious stories interesting. I'm so glad you spent a few minutes with me today to learn about the sailing stones from Death Valley. If you've made it this far, you'll probably like our other videos. We cover mysteries like this, disappearances and missing persons cases, as well as true crime. And we release videos a couple times a week. Please consider subscribing to this channel, signing up for notifications, and liking this video. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please share this video with someone who would enjoy it. It makes a huge difference, and we can't thank you enough for your support. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay safe, keep investigating, and we'll see you soon.